This is a flag. And 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 this is a flag. But what exactly makes a flag? A flag is defined as this. A piece of cloth or similar material, typically oblong or square, attachable by one edge to a polar rope and used as a symbol or emblem of a country or institution or as a decoration during public festivals. Basically, the purpose of flags has always been identification. Historically, flags originate as military standards, used in the battlefield as field signs. Armies since ancient times have used flags in order to recognise allies and enemy forces. As in ancient times, most countries levied soldiers instead of having a standing army, and so men did not have similar equipment or uniforms. So in a battle, things could get very confusing very quickly. It was not until the age of sail, around the 15th century, that most nations began adopting national flags, and this was to help identify who ships and ports etc. belong to. Believe it or not, there is a study of flags, and the study of flags is called vexillology. This comes from the Latin word vexillum, which means flags, plus the ending ology. Flags are usually made up of meaningful symbols. For instance, in the Northern Irish flag, we have six points representing the six counties and a red hand which tells the story of an ancient king of Ulster who cut off his hand and threw it to shore in order to claim the land before his brother. Flags also have meaningful colours. For instance, the Ukrainian flag has a yellow base and a blue top. The yellow representing the fields of corn and the blue representing the blue sky which both represent the fertility of the country. But what exactly makes a good flag according to vexillology? So number one, flags should be kept simple. Flags should only use basic colours and only contain around three of them, and as well as that flags should not be too detailed or have writing on them. The reason for both of these is that you want your flag to be identifiable from a long distance. Not only that, but until recently the vast amount of people were illiterate, and so couldn't read anyway. So for instance, if we take the flag of San Francisco and put it in the distance, we have no hope of reading what it says, especially on the crest, unless of course you have eagle vision. Number two, flags should have meaningful symbolism. It's hard to rally around a flag that has no meaning for the people it's representing. Ancient army standards would often represent the gods worshiped the bravery of the men, their heritage, and so forth. And this helped to form a strong bond and identity. Number three, flags need to be distinctive. It is for this reason that during the American Civil War, the Confederates gave up using the Stars and Bars flag and started using the Confederate flag we know today. This was because the Stars and Bars was not distinct enough from the Yankee Stars and Stripes. So let's recap. Flags started as a way, first of all, to identify armies, navies, and then nations. The study of flags is called vexillology, and to make a good flag, it needs to be simple, meaningful, and distinctive. <laughs>